as we are talking right now, it's probably midnight in Kenya. And I can see many kids who have gone to bed on an empty stomach. It was lunchtime. We were sitting around a table and we were all holding hands. And my father was praying for the lunch that we were about to eat. But there was only one problem. <laughs> Our table was empty. My earliest recollections is finding myself at the age of five, roaming the streets, eating from downstairs. And when my father said, Amen, I opened my eyes once again. And the table was still empty. We were not able to have food at all, at all. We were forced to live with 17 of our other relatives in a very small shanty. Shacks that are bumper to bumper, no toilets. A lot of crime. If you want to be out of poverty, then you have to deal with drugs. No running water. There's a lot of rape for children. Disease was just all over the place. Some of uh, my friends were actually sold into prostitution. Kids dying for preventable causes. And that's what I saw. And as darkness engulfs the place, the devil takes over. One morning, I just woke up that, you know, my uncle is just touching me in some parts of my body that I just thought to myself that this can't be happening. One day, my father was murdered right next to my mother, and I knew that moment that my life had changed. I watched as my 10-month-old sister died in the laps of my mother out of starvation. My relatives would always tell me, Michelle, you are so ugly. You look exactly like your father. You will become nothing but a thief and a drug addict when you grow up. And those were the words that I heard from people whom I expected to love and take care of me. And that made me feel so shameful of who I am. Poverty had told me I am hopeless, I am nothing. And I believed that. But right in the middle of this desperation, it was then that compassion intervened. One Sunday morning, my Aunt Carol, she's the only Christian person that I know during that time, she woke me up and said that we have to go to this church. And she registered me you know, to become um, the 37th child in that um, Compassion Project. What joy and dancing came to my home at the news that I'd finally got a sponsor. I received my first letter. We wrote back and forth. And he told me, you are my first friend outside my continent. She said words like, Richmond, I love you. Richmond, I'm praying for you. And that lightened me up. My sponsor told me, Michelle, you are beautiful. You are precious to us. We are proud of you, and we are praying for you, and we love you. And the words touch the very depth of my heart and soul. 18 years later, here I am, a child rescued from hopelessness by a young person. My life was changed. My life was changed. My life was changed. By a teenager who sponsored me. I was sponsored by a teenager. She was 15 years old. Her name is Ashley. One teenager changed my life. She was 15. Her name was Heather. I called her mom. There were five teenagers in the family. They had one telephone landline. And instead of having a second landline, they decided to sponsor a child. And that little child that was sponsored, that's me. My name is Michelle. My name is Tony. My name is Jimmy. My name is Richmond. And one act saved my life. And one act saved my life. Saved my life. Will you act? The choice is yours. Sponsor a child through compassion today. Release a child from poverty. From poverty. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name.